How's it going? Welcome back to episode 9 of the Cyberbike Build project thing. These naming things never work. Oh boy. We're having another one of those days. Not like that day where I couldn't find something that was obviously something that could be found. But no, this is more like one of those days where you're just like, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? We just start, you know, second guessing everything. The thing I'm second guessing at the moment is the swing arms. Because there's this, there's this battle that's going on inside my head at the moment between aesthetics and functionality. The two biggest contenders for any kind of thing. We make stuff to do things, but it has to look good. This is a constant battle for designers and engineers the world over, and I'm, I'm seeing that same problem there. How do we make the swing arms look good without making them less functional? Or how do I keep the functionality without losing the aesthetic? It starts looking ugly because you have to add in thickness here, or lengthen a thing here, or shorten a thing here to serve this purpose of functionality. And it loses that aesthetic look. And that's what I'm having trouble with at the moment. What I drew on paper was all well and good, but that doesn't cover the three-dimensional world. And when you start designing things in three dimensions, you have to take into account functionality and that extra dimension when it comes to that aesthetic idea that you had to begin with. And that's this roadblock I've hit. So today we're going to look at the swing arms, go back and check them out. The rear, I'm kind of, kind of happy with, but you'll see what I mean. But let's have a look at what, what needs to be done. What is my big battle at the moment? What is, what is, what is destroying my personal motivation to get shit done? In the drawing, I had this sort of over the wheel sort of thing going on. And then the, the arm came out like this, and then there'd be this parallelogram that would control the, the, the angle of this, this angle here, and that came up underneath it, and this would come and attach to the frame, and then this would come up underneath that and attach to the frame. And then somewhere in here, like this would have a pivot, which would be in line with this. Um, and then that's where the steering mechanism would attach that came up to the handlebars. So I, all in all, like in my head, I had that design idea pretty fleshed out. But when I started actually making this, it, it didn't look right. It still doesn't look right. I don't like it. So it's all going. It's all going. I'm getting rid of it. I'm starting from scratch. It's gone. I'm going to go do some research and I'll come back in a week with something. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, this is all going. It all has to go. It is ugly as sin. It's non-functional. Like the, I can't even, I can't even begin to imagine what the forces on this would be if it were cast out of aluminum and you've got forces on these things then traveling through and then up over the tire and then to the pivot point and then you've also got the shock attachment to it like the oh just you know what no bye go gone you two ugly be gone good riddance now the back swing up i actually kind of like the look of it it does follow the aesthetic that i'm going for i think i'm going to have to follow what i did here that looks right and just mirror it onto the front now there are some things i'd like to change with this one starting with the fact that it's all freeform geometry. Freeform geometry is great for roughing stuff out, for getting the look of something, you know, nailed down quickly, but it's terrible as a parametric design tool for when you need to go to machine it or cast it or any kind of real world application of that thing there is bad because there are no reference, there's no reference geometry. None of the surfaces are square or flat or flush. It's all just freeform. It's in the name of the design. Freefall. So I need to remake this entire thing using parametric geometry and it's going to be difficult because you've got your main pivot axle here and then you've got these arms that's come out at a certain angle and then it needs to be flat for a certain bit but at the same time it's also doing angles in other directions where it comes out and needs to be flat for a bit is actually here where it's also angled. And then how do you connect all these up? How do you draw it? How do you design it? It's a complicated shape and Freeform allows you to make complicated shapes easily. Parametric design is not the best for making sort of organic-ish looking things. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I think this is gonna be the shortest episode in this series, I think, because I'm basically saying, hey, look, I've run into some trouble with the design choices I've made and I need to rethink those choices. So I'm going to be dealing with those choices and those mistakes and I don't know when I'm going to have more to show for it. 
when I'll come forward. What I'll do instead then is the next episode, we're going to look at the batteries. Because out of everything that we've got going so far that I've done, there's things that I've had an idea or I've known how to work on. The reason why I'm running into trouble with the swing arms at the moment is because it's an aesthetic design choice that didn't work out, so I have to rethink that. But the other things that I can work on, aside from you know nuts and bolts and stuff, which is basically what I've been doing, I'm putting things off for the last couple of days, just working on bits and pieces, making alterations to disc brakes, sprockets, the rims, I had to change those for the front end steering. I've been using these as excuses to not do the thing that I was struggling with in my mind and that was the swing up. But the other things that I can do are things like the battery packs. I can't complete them completely because I haven't nailed down the idea for the frame yet, but I think once I get the batteries done, and then after that we'll work on the motor, then the frame should th sort of organically start to come into fruition. Because once we've got all these parts coming into place, the frame will just be there, where it needs to be. You'll see how it'll have to attach to these different components, where everything will have to go, how it'll connect, and the frame will just sort of mold itself out of that need. So its form and function will be the result of the things around. And that's why I haven't touched the frame yet. That's why we had that mock-up. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this one short. I just wanted to get a video out, because I've been putting stuff off. I've been just fighting in my head over what I need to do about these problems, and when you get in this sort of don't really have something to show for it you're like uh, do I want to put a video out when I've not really got anything to show for it well yes I need to get a video out because otherwise I'll just be sitting and watching anime all day and that's not good for me and that's not good for you guys because you guys want to see where this is going so get this video out say hey look I'm gonna have to make some changes something didn't work out mistakes mistakes were made this happens move on we'll get back to it in the next video and we're gonna start looking at the batteries until the next episode I'm in chaos and I'll see you guys next time